Hi, I'm Seth Freuberg. I'm the Director of Options Trading here at SMBU in Manhattan. I'm also the head trader of SMB Capital's Options Trading Desk. So uh, today I'd like to talk about following your plan. I'm doing this video today because I'm annoyed at myself and usually when I'm annoyed at myself I do some analysis to figure out uh, why and then a lot of times uh, I can come up with some ideas that are something worth sharing uh, with our options trading community. So um, why am I annoyed at myself today? I'm annoyed at myself because in the last three trading days I have broken my rules, I have not followed my plan and every time he did that it hurt me badly and it got me to thinking about why do I keep breaking my own trading rules that I have developed myself and that is a very very important question to ask yourself as a trader. There was a book uh, by a guy named Curtis Faith called The Way of the Turtle. It's a really good book and it's about a, uh, a trading firm uh, and the two principals had a bet that they could develop traders from scratch, just find people who they thought were had some raw talent but had no trading experience and just trade them from scratch. And they taught them a very simple trading system and asked them to do nothing but follow it. They'd keep their jobs if they simply followed the plan. They weren't going to worry about how much money they made or lost. All they had to do was follow the plan. And it turns out it was a pretty good plan and if you followed it you made money but that's besides the point. They were told up front just follow the plan and you'll keep your job. And the writer of the book, Curtis Faith, who did follow the plan and did very well, was amazed at how many of the guys who got this wonderful opportunity uh, simply just did not follow the plan. So it begs the question, why don't people follow their plans and why did I not follow my plan over the last three trading days? So let's talk about it. What are the major reasons that people don't follow their plans? Uh, I was able to come up with three. Maybe send me an email and let me know if you can come up with any, any others. But the three I came up with were, number one, you know what's going to happen next in the market. Now I'm saying that sarcastically. Uh, you, th you think you know what's going to happen in the market left but next. So I would ask you, really? You know? So there's 10,000 guys working over at uh, Goldman Sachs here downtown in New York. They've got uh, a giant research budget. They've got computers and software that are far advanced past anything that any one individual could possibly own or understand. But you know more than those guys. That's what you're telling me? You know, you don't. You obviously don't know what's going to happen next in the market. The market is so efficient that if everyone knew what was going to happen next, it would already have happened. So you don't know what is going to happen next. You don't know as a sell-off is going on when the bounce will occur. You don't know whether it's far off into the future or, uh, or immediate. You simply don't know. And so you have to accept that. Your plans, if they're good plans, are developed around the idea uh, that you do not know what's going to happen next, so you have to use certain risk management procedures to make sure that disaster does not occur. Second reason I came up with. Well, the talking heads said the market was going to go down. Okay, now let's take a look at the track record of the talking heads on CNBC or any one of the other uh, major uh, business news outlets. Uh, let's take a look at their track record, let's just say over the last 12 months. How'd they do around Brexit when everyone predicted that if Britain withdrew from the EU there would be a worldwide catastrophic sell-off. Which by the way did happen for about a day and a half or two days before the market launched into a dramatic lengthy rally. Okay? Or how about everyone's unanimous opinion that should Donald Trump win there would be this catastrophic worldwide sell-off 
which did in fact happen for about four hours. And then there was the most dramatic rally that I think I've ever seen. Okay, so the talking heads said X. They suddenly got on the news and said X. So therefore, you're going to break your trading plan because you know what's going to happen next in the market because the talking heads told you. Well, they don't know. They don't know, and in options trading, even if they did know, they might not know how the options would react to a particular direction. There could be high or low volatility associated with it, and therefore, um, even then, even if they happen to be right, uh, the effect on options would not necessarily be right. Reason three, continuation bias. This is uh, a disease that I particularly have, um, but uh, I, I'm sure many, many of you recognize it, and that is a tendency to think that whatever just happened is going to continue happening. Now that's just patently ridiculous. If the market sold off, then it will continue selling off. If that was true, then as soon as the market started selling off, it would go to zero. Or as soon as the market started rallying, it would go to infinity. So the concept that is triggered in your brain, who knows, maybe it's biological, that if you think I'm being chased by a tiger, I guess he'll just keep chasing me until he eats me. Well, maybe that works you know, on the plains in Africa, but it's not really the way the trading world works. And so the idea that whatever just happened will continue happening is, is, is how you're informing yourself. Then of course you're gonna break your plan and do an adjustment early uh, because uh, you know what's gonna happen next. So if you think about it, all three of these reasons have to do with a belief that despite your well-designed plan, you have to handle it differently now because you know what is going to happen next. Well, you don't. And the talking heads don't, and the market doesn't keep going in the exact same direction, and all of the other reasons that you cannot know exactly what's going to happen next. Perhaps there are probabilities of certain things occurring next, but you can't know for a certainty what is going to happen next, and you certainly can't know to the extent that it validates or it legitimizes your breaking your trading plan. So what I suggest is do what Alex did, Alex Porcaro on our trading desk, who's a terrific guy. He did a review of his entire past year, which is a very, very good practice for a trader. And he did a run of comparing the differences between trading the way he did and following his plan. And following his plan was dramatically better than simply uh, responding emotionally in the moment for all the reasons I just mentioned. So I'm throwing out a challenge to everyone watching this video. Take a look at your trading over the last year and do that same comparison. And then send me an email and tell me how did you do compared to how you would have done had you simply followed your plan. Following your plan is time tested, it's easier, and it almost always is more profitable. So go through that exercise. I'm really interested, for those who uh, are watching this video, if you take this seriously, go do that and let me know what the outcome is. My prediction is the overwhelming number of the responses are going to be, yes, I would have done better if I had simply followed my plan. So take this seriously, do a review, it's a healthy exercise anyway, and you will improve as a trader. I can guarantee it. Thanks very much and we'll see you next week.